Hello everybody, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sound. Everything solar installation, everything inverter installation, everything going green. How you guys doing today? You're welcome. And today we're looking at the common mistakes in solar installation. These common mistakes should never occur. You should try as much as possible. So you need to pay attention. Hey, come on. If you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time for you to subscribe, all right? Because that's how you help us <laughs> to go on and get you more and more videos. And of course, the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people who also need to see this. And don't forget, if you're subscribed, you'll be the very first to be notified once we have fresh and brand new videos. And luckily for you, we do that every single weekend. You're welcome. So let's look at it. What exactly are those mistakes that you have? Those very common mistakes that happen in solar installation that should never happen. It should never happen to you. So you need to pay real rapt attention. <laughs> So the very first one would be wrong polarity connection. That's essentially when you connect uh, the wrong wires to where it's not supposed to be, when you place the negative wire to the positive terminal or when you place the positive wire to the negative terminal, that should never happen in a DC connection. I, I can never really overemphasize this and I say it all the time, that someone who is doing a connection or a configuration in your solar system is essentially like someone who's driving on the road. You can drive a thousand kilometers, but from the very first time that you push that start button to kickstart your journey, there should be rapt attention on the road. Every focus on the road, no undivided attention. All right, so every focus on the road, because it takes just a split second for you to have an accident on the road and nobody wants an accident on the road. And that's essentially like what it feels like when you're doing a connection in your solar system. You need all the attention that you can give, all right, so that you don't do the wrong thing or you mix up your solar connections or your wirings in your solar system. So I remember this incident that happened a very long time ago. <laughs> Even though it's been very long, but it seems, it feels like it's yesterday. So I make it a very big policy not to take my calls when I'm doing connections on my solar system. All right, because I know what that can be. It can be very distracting when you have phone calls and all of that. So that takes away your focus on what you are doing. All right, so what I essentially do is that I turn off my phone or I put it on silent. So once I'm done with the connections and I'm testing the systems to see how they're responding with all the connections that's been done, then I can begin to call everyone that tried to reach out to me while I was doing the connection. All right, but on one particular instance, I broke my rules and I took my calls. You know, I had it ring the first time, rang out, first, second time, rang out. So it was just someone that was just desperate to reach me. So when I couldn't ignore the sound of the telephone ringing, I just had to take the call. And to make matters worse, it was quite a very unfavorable... Um, I can't seem to remember exactly what happened because it's been a very long time, you know, but I knew that it wasn't a very good news at that time. So that got me very distracted. I wasn't paying attention anymore in the connections that I was doing. And that's when the mistake happened and I did a reverse polarity in my connections. So I took the negative wire and I connected it to the positive terminal. And I also took the positive wire and I connected it to the negative terminal. So when I was done with the connection, the moment I flipped the switch, the power switch, there was an explosion. <sighs> <laughs> I mean, I can talk about it today because it's, I mean, it, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny back then. It was a very big explosion. Everything that was connected on that power line exploded. The inverter, the charge controller, everything that I connected on that battery line got damaged. And you know what that did? That stalled that installation at that point in time i was very confused it was such a very huge loss so once you're done with the whole connection take your time begin to trace the wires where did i connect this to i mean this is a red wire okay okay the red wire went to okay fine it got to the uh live terminal okay the negative wire okay that went to the negative terminal you should ensure that everything is in the right place take your time you can check it once twice take all the time in the world to check it it's better to take your time to check if all the wirings are in the right places than for you to have a huge loss or an explosion that you don't want in your solar system. So that's actually what you need to do. Wrong polarity connection should never happen to you. That's one of the common mistakes and it happens all the time. 
And one other thing I can think of that happens in your solar connections could also be wrong settings in your systems. All right, so you have the settings in your charge controller and you have your settings in your inverter. So all of these settings are meant to take care of the battery system and how it charges. All right, so if you do a settings wrong, it's going to affect how everything turns out. So I got this call from an installer. They've been trapped at a location for more than four days. All right, they've finished all the connections. They've finished all the PV uh, paneling. They've installed the inverters, the charge controllers. The batteries are all set. Everything is working but they seem to be recording low wattage and low amperage and they don't seem to know what the problem is. They've tried everything. They've had to go back to the roof again to check if everything was fine. They checked all the strings. Um, their solar panel has a capacity of seven kilowatts. So on the minimum, they're supposed to be heating at least 4,000 watts, but they were barely heating like 400 watts. So that in itself was a problem. They tried everything, they traced all the wires, everything seemed okay. And of course, you, you know that when you use your meters to test the strings that you've connected, there's a particular voltage that you get, you know that the connection is right, there's nothing wrong. Cause sometimes in the strings, you can make a mistake while you're connecting the wire. So instead of um, uh, you connecting the negative to positive, you can double up two positives and that's gonna reduce the voltage. But the moment you test the two extremes, all right, that will give you a particular voltage that you're expecting. So once that voltage is reached, that means you've done the right thing. So they did all that, but that didn't seem to correct anything. So they reached out to me and I said, okay, what about the settings in your charge controller? Have you done that properly? They say, yes, they've done all the settings. I say, okay, fine, let's go over it one more time. So I told them to long press. When you long press, that gives you access into the settings. And I say, okay, let's first go to uh the current the current charge settings so when we got to that current charge settings and that's where the problem was okay because the charge controller is 120 amps charge controller so it's supposed to be set to 120 amps and of course depending on your uh battery system all right but instead of being set to 120 amps it was set to 10 amps so that in itself is also a restrictive uh, mechanism that's been built by the manufacturers to be able to regulate uh, the amount of amperage that you want. So when it gets to that particular amperage, it doesn't go beyond that amperage. So what's been happening is that the amperage has remained at 10 amps and it doesn't go beyond 10 amps. So I told them, increase it all the way to 120 amps. So the moment they started increasing it, they had not even gotten to like 50 amps and the entire system set on fire, man. <laughs> <laughs> the wattage came up, the amperage came up, and I said, go ahead, keep increasing it. So now you know, so all the settings that you have in your system is very important. Always go to the manual. The manual will always tell you how to set what you have in your charge controller, what you have in your inverter to be able to care for your batteries. And of course, how to choose your battery type in your system, how to set the number of hours you want your batteries to absorb. If you want it to absorb for two hours, for three hours, or you want to leave the job for the system algorithm to figure that out on its own and be able to do that for you. And of course, when you're using a lithium battery that does not require any form of absorption, you set it to where it should be properly so that you protect the battery. So essentially all of the settings in your charge controller, in your inverter is very important. So it has to be put in the right place. Otherwise it's gonna be a problem for you. So the first thing you do is to check what your system voltage is. If your system voltage is 24 volts, that is going to affect a whole lot of things in your installation. It's going to affect the way your batteries are connected and arranged. It's going to affect the way you connect your solar panel. It's going to affect the way you set your charge controller. And most importantly, if you don't know what your inverter voltage system is, that could lead to a damage. So this happened to me. So it's like a personal experience. So I want to share with you guys. So there's this period that I sent some installers to out of town to help me do an installation. It was a very small installation, a 24 volt system and there was an oversight. <laughs> I forgot to tell them that it's a 24 volt system because they're already used to uh, working with 48 volt system. That's what we use for most of our installations, 48 volt system. All right, so I actually forgot to tell them that, look, that's a 24 volt system because that's going to affect everything, you know? So I had completely forgotten, but the moment my phone rang, I just couldn't explain that feeling. The moment my phone rang and I saw who was calling me, my mind went to the fact that, look, this is what must have happened. And from the guy's shaky voice from the other end of the line, from when he was talking to me, 
that confirmed the fears that look, this has actually happened. So what happened was that they didn't know it was a 24 volt system, so they connected the battery, it was four batteries, so they connected the batteries in series and that gave them 48 volts. So the moment they powered the systems, the inverter blew up. All right, so that's why it's always very important. The first thing you do is to check the voltage of the inverter to ensure that this is the particular voltage of the system. So if, if it's a 48 volt system, you connect all your batteries. If you have 12 batteries, you connect them in series. So if it's a 24 volt system, you'll definitely have to connect two in series, then you put the rest in parallel. All right, so to ensure that you don't have that type of situation. So it, it, it was really crazy because that incident happened out of town. So we had to bring the solar system, we had to bring the inverter back to Lagos to have it fixed. And of course, um, I was lucky because it was still under warranty. It was a brand new inverter and the, um, support system for the brand they didn't complain they just, just took it in and they had it repaired so one thing that always happens too is wrong cable size using the wrong cable size in your wiring wrong cabling that could cost you a lot of energy loss all right so if you have anything between three kilowatt and seven kilowatt it should use nothing but a minimum of 16 mm diameter cables to do your connections if you use anything lower it's going to affect the flow of energy that is coming from your solar system, from your solar panels to your solar system, all right? So whatever cable that you're using should be very adequate to be able to handle the energy that is flowing from the solar panels to your solar system. So if you use anything that is lower than the wire gauge that you're supposed to use, there's gonna be loss of energy, all right? Because there's electrons traveling in those wires. Okay, so if that particular wire can handle it, What's going to happen is that when you hold the wires, you will experience that it's very warm. In some instances, it could be very hot. And that in itself is what signifies resistance. And whenever you have resistance, there's loss of energy. All right. So always ensure, my friend, that whenever you're doing these connections, that you use the right cable size. And it's very important. The way you configured your PV is wrong. It shouldn't be that way. So most times your system will determine how you're going to connect your solar panels. If your solar panels is going to be one in series, if it's going to be two in series, if it's going to be three in series, or if you're going to connect it to a very high voltage inverter, it is your system well that will determine. So I'll give you an example. So if you're using a PWM to do your connections, of course, you know that PWM does not have the ability to convert voltage back to current. So if your system is a 12 volt system, it limits you to a 100 watt solar panel. All right, so that's the only one that is not going to have so much voltage. Because if you have a whole lot of voltage that is above the headroom for your nominal voltage, that's going to be a whole lot of waste because your PWM does not have the ability to be able to convert that voltage back to the current. All right. So you now see how your system has determined how your system configuration should be. And every charge controller has a minimum input voltage and maximum input voltage. All right, so the minimum input voltage means that if you give it less than that, it's not going to come on. Even if it does come on, it's not going to charge properly. Even if it does charge, it's not going to give you the maximum output that you desire. And the maximum output, of course, means that you can give it more than the recommended input maximum voltage or that could damage the charge controller and all of that. So that in itself are the things you need to look at. Do you need to do two in series? Do you need to do three in series? And sometimes in the connections that we do, if you have a 48 volt system and you're using a high voltage inverter, some inverters are like 450 volts, some inverters are 250 volts. So let's assume that you do a connection of 450 volts for a 48 volt system. So what your MPPT charge controller is essentially going to do is that it's going to take a couple of voltage that is above your nominal voltage. That's 48 volts. So once it takes what is sufficient for you to charge the battery, the rest, it will convert it back to current. And now that's a whole lot of conversion, more than 390 volts to be converted back to current. And in that process, it's going to lose a lot of energy. Now look at that as opposed to doing your connection to like maybe uh, three in series and you have just a hundred volts. So there's not much of conversion in terms of voltage to be done back to current. So there won't be much of energy lost.